and technology launch. Delighted you can all join us here today. Um, I'm Tom, I'm the quant leader at Dyson Australia, um, and this is Will Darbell, who's category manager for Dyson Ever Technologies. Um, so Will's joined us um, from Singapore today, um, which is um, fantastic. Um, so what we're going to do is take you through um, a, a short presentation um, right here, um, and then we're going to lead you through to the technology demonstration zone, which is going to be just around the corner, um, and that's where you're going to have a chance to get uh, hands-on with the product. Um, so if I could just ask that you keep any questions back um, until we actually get into the technology demonstration zone, that would be much appreciated. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, um, we do have bathrooms just over there to my left, and obviously help yourselves to um, teas and coffee. And uh, these as well. And um, so, um, without further ado, um, Will, over to you. Thanks, Tom. My name is Will Darno, I'm a chemistry manager looking after Airbed product development at Dyson. Um, I'm really excited to have you all here today to show you a fantastic new piece of Airbed technology. For those of you who don't know, Dyson is a global technology company and we employ more than 5,800 engineers all over the world whose primary focus is to solve problems which other people don't know. Dyson didn't always look like this, so more than 30 years ago, it was just one man, James Dyson. And he would eventually design what would be the world's first cyclonic vacuum cleaner. And back then, he was trying to engineer a product which worked more efficiently, was more effective, worked better than everything else. And also, which removed consumables, so he was getting rid of the, of the vacuum cleaner bag, which clogged up with dust and made it less efficient. And this ethos still lives on within the company today. Whether that's improving indoor air quality with our coated purifiers, supporting people's body clocks with our lighting, or hygienically drying people's hands with our air laid hand dryers. So, with that, it's my pleasure to develop you today the new Dyson 9KJ hand dryer. <laughs> <laughs> So the Dyson nice 9KJ is our quietest hand dryer ever. And it's the fastest, most energy efficient hand dryer we've ever put today. We call it 9KJ like because it uses <coughs> just 9 kilojoules of energy per dryer, which is a tiny amount of energy. To put that into perspective, if you were to boil, boil your kettle, you could then use that equivalent amount of energy to run 9KJ about 30 times. So it's really using tiny amounts of energy each time you dry your hands. As Tom mentioned, we've got some amazing demonstrations and experiments to show you some of the technology behind 9KJ, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but before then, I want to talk about some of the issues with current hand drying methods. So, the most prevalent method of hand drying is actually paper towels. But if you take a step back and just think about the life cycle of a paper towel, we actually realise they're incredibly bad for the environment. To make paper, you need wood. So, you start by having to cut down trees and clear forests. You then transport this wood to paper factories. And paper factories use a huge amount of water, chemicals and bleaches in order to convert that wood pulp into paper. And they also use a huge amount of energy to do that. Once you have paper towels, you're going to transport these all over the world to wash rooms. So that's again going in lorries and ships and planes to get them around the world. But if you think about using a paper towel, you grab it from the dispenser, you dry your hands with it once, and you throw it away. It's a single use product. And then, often they come from recycled, so they end up in landfill, they end up being incinerated. So if you take a back and think about that, it's cutting down trees, it's processing that, using lots of chemicals and water and energy, transforming it around the world to use it once, but then to end up in landfill to be incinerated. So incredibly impactful. And the other prevailing method is the traditional hot air dryer. And the design of these hasn't really changed in 100 years since they were first invented. So you very, very crude, inefficient motors. Uh, most of them just draw in the, the dirty air from the bathroom they're in and then project that quite weakly onto your hands. Some of them have heating elements which try to speed up that drying process. But really, well, I'm, I'm sure everyone here at one point has used one of these and then left the bathroom kind of drying their hands on their trousers um, to just finish them off. So lots and lots of problems. So to solve all of these, we've deployed a lot of different technology within 9KJ. The first piece I want to talk about is our Dyson Digital V4 motor. So the Dyson Digital Motor is really the heart of 9KJ. And we spent more than £350 million pounds developing our digital motor technology over the years. And we've made more than 75 million of these, which go to market for products. The digital motor within 9KJ spends at 75,000 RPM, and this provides the necessary flow of pressure for our new packages curved lake technology. So these curved blades follow the contours of your hands and dry them in the very hard to reach places. Each blade has a 450 micron aperture, 
which then converts that pressure and flow into 624 kilometer per hour sheets of air. And this is mechanically scraping the water from your hands. To make sure this is very hygienic, we use a HEPA filter in the product to purify all the air. So we have a HEPA filter at the top of my KJ. Um, and this removes 99.95% of all particles from the air, including bacteria and viruses. That HEPA filter is about 2.2 meters long, and we put it 63 times to fold it up into the space that fits into the product. So that means all of the air that's brought through the product is all purified, very, very clean and hygienic. And as I mentioned, Mount KJ is our quietest hand dryer ever. And this is a picture of Mount KJ being tested in our semi anechoic chamber where we spent lots of time developing and researching different pieces of technology to make Mount KJ very quiet. One of the main reasons that Mount KJ is so efficient and so quiet is this inline format, which is very, very different. So it means that the air comes straight at the top, comes straight down, and then onto your hands. If you're imagining a hand with different twists and turns, it introduces turbulence and noise that can be quite inefficient and loud. So having that inline format is very important. We also employ different sciences working in unison with the product. We have both an inlet science on one side of the vehicle digital motor and an outlet science. And these help to silence any of the noise emitted from our very, very powerful motor. We also map the default motor using a silicon rubber housing, and this helps to reduce airborne vibration and the noise emitted from the product. So, well, can I um, just ask for anyone who's not been in a semi anechoic chamber, it is pretty, a pretty uncomfortable space to move along and actually get your own part in there. But can you just talk us through what a, that kind of chamber is and does? So our, our semi-anechoic chambers, we have a few of these across the world in our different research and design facilities. Um, but it's a huge, huge chamber which employs these different uh, backwalls, and these are a design to absorb sound. So it's quite a, it's a strange, um, strange feeling to be in an anechoic chamber because there's absolutely no echo whatsoever. You kind of, if you're facing someone and talking to them, they can hear you clearly. If you turn slightly off to the side, it's very, very difficult to hear people just because the sound isn't reflecting where they are. Um, and then also the entire room um, are put on to sprung feet, so again, it reduces any vibrations you actually get from the earth where important people walk past it. So it's an incredibly, incredibly quiet space. And we use these to constantly refine and improve the sound emitted from our products, and even the quality of the sound emitted from our products. So you guys will spend hundreds of hours in this room. I have no idea how you do it, but that, that's, uh, that's obviously the level that you go to for the testing. Yeah. So we've been selling hand dryer products to businesses now for quite a long time and we've learned a lot of good things and a lot of bad things about hand dryers. And we've taken all this learning and put it into our KJ. In its most basic form, this is making products you know, really easy to install and very, very easy to service, to replace filters and to change modes. We've also put some more advanced features in, such as two power modes. You have a maximum mode and a pinto mode. And depending on what kind of business you run, you can make a decision about which mode to put it into. So for example, if you were at an airport or a train station or a stadium, you could put it into max mode. And that means you know, when you see really high spikes in football, you know, people get off a plane or a train, or at half time people uh, you know, go out to use the bathroom in a stadium, you, you want to move people through washing as quickly as you can. So in max mode, you can drive people down to another 10 seconds and quickly move them through the space. However, if you run an office or a restaurant, you don't see those high peaks, you see kind of a, you know, a, kind of a slow, um, you know, like natural drinking people through the washroom each day. So you can put my KJ in eco mode. And this still dries people's hands very, very quickly at 12 seconds. However, it reduces the energy consumed, making it more efficient, and also makes the product much, much quieter. So again, as a business owner, you can choose which mode you want to have it in. And we also know how much abuse that hand dryers can sometimes get in the bathroom. So um, we spent a lot of time making the uh, food grade stainless steel fetcher of my KJ incredibly strong. And um, we actually had Giles here as one of our engineers, and it was Giles' job for about a year just to see if he could pull my KJ off the wall. Um, and the point which he couldn't, we said, Thank you, Giles, your job's done, and you're going to win the ship. So we spent a lot of time making my KJ incredibly robust, robust and strong. I actually applied for that job, but I was not sure. So overall, we're really excited to show you some of the technology behind my KJ. So if you'll please follow me around, we have a bit of a washing experience. This is the other one corner. I have a bit of a boutique washroom here. So this is an opportunity for everyone to actually you know, wash your hands. We have working taps, and you can experience the product both in the internal and the max mode. 
and our friends in the blue team before we move on to the next center. Please, everyone, yeah, have a good time. Just like on a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Exactly. There you go. Um, so guys, any, any questions at this point? Just a good chance to pause. Um, is, well, I actually got three questions. One, what's the decibel level between both of them that you've measured in terms of the difference? So the fact that it's 79, 79. which is the same as our existing new product, but it's 277, and it's 77 in the code for the 12 seconds. And considering the curved blade, is there a sort of, obviously, you know, you just put your hands in a normal hair dryer, but is there a sort of preferred method of, you know, whether it's closer, a bit further away? Because we, we've done lots of trying by KJ um, to help improve the usability of the product, position those blades at a very comfortable angle for people of all kind of sizes and heights to be able to use them. Um, and also there's, there's a reason that the blades are yellow as well that actually improves usability. It helps people who've never seen the product before to go straight into the correct position. The only, I guess the only issue I've noticed is that with my suit jacket, it did sort of spray a bit of water up my sleeve. So, that, I mean, that's the only yeah. thing, but it did, you know, do it quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, I think um, the piece that's really interesting just around what you just mentioned, and your second question is um, the user trials that we've done a lot of, yeah. right? So, can you share, just share a little bit more about that process? So, to do those user trials, you know, we, we do a lot of things to make sure that the, the designs we're creating you know, can be used and are intuitive to people. Um, to test our hand product, we actually um, we always make sure that people have never seen a Dyson hand dryer before. They, they are out there, they're not, oh, there's not many in Australia, <laughs> um, but to people who've never seen our technology, and we then use them um, and say, you know, don't your hands and see how they do. So we're looking at um, you know, actually trying to achieve a 100% success rate so people know exactly where to go and how to dry their hands and have never seen it. Would it be that um, the gentleman over there maybe had his hands a bit too high or something? Or yeah, maybe well, used one before? We're, we're trying to strike that middle uh, balance and getting the product the right height and position the blade so it's comfortable for people of all heights uh, and kind of frames. So it's, there's always a little bit of a trade off of people going to a really great place. There wasn't a lot of water, I'm just saying, yeah. You can always try it again anyway and see. Yeah. You know. But I mean, a normal hand dryer would do it anyway, yeah, so. Exactly. Cool. Fantastic. So, one more question? Um, how easy is it to change from Maximo to Echo mode and back again? Great question. Um, so again, we, we know building is that we have to call out electricians in order to change that. So just like changing a filter, to change it between the two modes, you get a facilities manager or building managers to come. There's two security screws in the bottom which you take out, the whole product is disconnected from the wall, and to change mode is the easiest sliding switch. Yeah. And changing the filter is just you know, putting the filter out and putting the old in. So all the services are different. People can't do it, so you can generally expect people to put it in one mode and leave it there. Um, but certainly if you were maybe in an event space, depending on the type of event you have, you have some changes between modes. And then you know, you're either prioritizing moving people through that space very quickly, or you're reducing your energy costs and reducing them. But it's just it's not something that a... Not the user can do, no. ...do themselves, because otherwise people will flick it exactly. and play with it. So it's, it would be for a, a facilities manager or building owner to do. 
clearly it's easy. Unscrew it, pull it off, change it, put it back, put the two screws in. Off you go. We won't do that demonstration. No, that's fine. <laughs> and any other questions? Yes. <laughs> any colour you want except black. Well, as long as this one, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, plenty more and take in as we move through to the next section. So, if you'd like to follow us in the channel, you can get to it, please come in. But uh, here we have an exploded view of Mark and Jack. This kind of shows just how much technology we've really packed into the product. And um, we can kind of work through this in a bit more detail. So, right at the top, as I said, we have a HEPA filter. Um, it's actually a cross section of the HEPA filter here. So, this captures us 99.95% of all particles in the air and cleans bacteria and viruses, which means that the, the air that we're putting in from the washer and projecting onto our hands at 624 kilometers per hour is very hygienic. It's actually two layers where there's outer kind of fleece material, and what that does is capture kind of bigger bits of fluff and dust, um, and it protects our glass fiber uh, HEPA filter, and, and this is what then filters out the ultrafine particles, including bacteria and viruses. So we draw again through that at the top of our, uh, top of our product, and uh, then go straight down um, into our uh, digital V4 motor. Uh, and also, Dyson makes all of its own digital motors, so we're not buying something off the shelf. Um, which you know, kind of fits into our application. You know, we've specifically designed this, this motor and this variant to be to give us kind of perfect read balance performance for 9KJ. Um, and we also said this is our quietest air raid ever. Uh, to do that, we've done lots of things. There's that inline format, so you know, we're drawing air through the filter to go straight to our V4 and out into our blades. Um, but we've also got our inlet silencer, and this is positioned above the V4. Uh, this is an open cell phone, which is attenuating the noise emitted from the motor. Uh, we also have an outlet silencer as well, which is also attenuating noise. Um, but also helping with the swirl of our, uh, our impeller. So I think I mentioned that the V4 spins at 75,000 RPM, so the air coming out of the back of that is swirling very, very quickly. Um, so we have this layer of perforated, um, perforated plates, and what that does is it helps control that swirl and straighten the air out. Um, so you're reducing turbulence, reducing noise, but also making it much more efficient. So the air's coming out in a, in a much smoother path. And that air then comes out of there and into our curved blades, our patented curved blades. And these, as you've experienced, are what kind of follow the contours of your hands uh, and able, to, able you to reach those hard to drive places. We also use time of flight sensors, um, which are very, very advanced sensors. We also use them in our robot vacuum cleaners. And these are incredibly accurate, very uh, precise in understanding that people's hands are in front of the product and when they're not. So we identified a problem with traditional uh, hand dryers, where often you, know, you put your hands underneath them, it takes a couple of seconds to realize you're there and it turns on. And then equally, when you take your hands away, when you think they're dry, the product runs for a few seconds. And that may not seem like a problem. However, once it's running, your hands are underneath it, it's, it's inefficient. It's, it, the motor is running, but it's not actually drying anything. So, Having these very precise sensors means that the product turns on when you're there, it turns off when you're not. So it's never consuming energy when you're not using the product. Um, so obviously you can see we deploy a, a lot of different technologies across the whole of 9 kj Have you got any kind of questions at this point about any of those? You were mentioning before about the turbulence. So I'm noticing obviously it's coming down from the top and then getting spread out yeah. left and right. How do you avoid the turbulence in that? So that's where our, our, um, our diffuser is perforated the plates when it's playing. So we've got our, our manifold at the bottom, and this is what then splits the air into each branch. It's what's helping split it there. If the air is coming out and it's spinning, as it goes into that, it's all really messy. Um, but because we've smoothed it out and made it very laminar and very efficient, it just splits quite nicely into the plates. Right. So we're trying to turn it as little as possible throughout the product, because every time you turn the air, it's inefficient to create noise and turbulence. So we, we bring it in. Through our filter straight down and then turn it only once they go to those straight to dry hands. And those who are familiar with some of our other technologies, obviously like um, purifiers or, or even vacuums, will know that obviously that manipulation of airflow is something that we put a lot of investment into. And you know, I'm, I'm sure that was kind of a, a big focus area in terms of teams working together and trying to figure out how can we get air moving this way or that way so to the optimum position. Absolutely. And I think one thing I really like about um, this exploded machine, is, as we call it internally, is that it really brings to life all of the different components and how they come together. Each of these might even have a, a team or even a single person, right? Who's that? Who's 
one part is their baby basically for their two or three years, um, but it just gives you a sense of how much investment goes in to every single component. Yeah. With your um, hot and cold uh, fans mm -hmm. that have their filtration, the filter lasts for about a year, I guess, depending on how much you use it. Now, this is obviously a much more commercial environment. So what's the lifespan of this filter and what would it cost a, a company to replace it? Um, so the, the, the life of a filter does depend on the environment it's in. If it's very, very dirty, you know, if it's an extreme case, it might be a cold line. Um, it, can, it won't last very long at all. However, in, in what we think is a normal environment, this will last for, you know, past the warranty period and you know, pretty much for the life of the product. So we're talking about, you know, a decade or around there. So it's clearly a uh, different technology to the technology that's in your consumer uh, well, filtration. It's, it's a very different operating point. Um, our purifying fans are you know, really trying to, you know, trying to move air and purify the whole room. So it's quite an operating point application compared to this, which is trying to be incredibly efficient and quick at drying fans. Um, so it's, it's just a, you know, it's a different operating point. It's putting less flow overall through the filter, which means we can make it last longer. So it's years? Yeah, years and years. Absolutely. But we're not, you know, Dustin doesn't make any money off of selling replacement parts, including filters to anybody. You know, that was one of the things that James was frustrated with the traditional vacuum cleaners was the bag. So we've tried to remove that, so which is why we've, again, we've spent a lot of time making sure that we're, we're confident the, the filter will last the life of the product. We're not trying to make money by selling this to people. And to answer your question, uh, $40 to replace the filter. Um, but it will last at least five years uh, with 200 yeah. uses of that. Yeah. yeah. And the warranty period? Cost is a good one. We'll come back to very shortly as well as yeah. the whole, whole other kind of layer of the cost piece. So sure, the lady was just asking about the warranty period? The warranty is five years. So I think we've, uh, we've touched on it already, but we, we talked about the angle of the blades. They're actually positioned at 70 degrees. They, they give people you know, all sizes, uh, you know, a very comfortable drying position, both palms in and palms out to get both sides. Um, and you can also see here you know, just how strong our, our stainless steel fascia is. You know, the, the thickness of the stainless steel down here to make it very, very strong is going to be thick and incredibly strong. Any other questions before we move to the next section? I have one. Um, my glasses really says didn't catch it. But I was quite a bit of the air was cool. Did you catch it? Yeah, so we don't. Again, we, we're not heating up the air. Um, it, sometimes it does get slightly warmer just because we're compressing it so much and spinning it so quickly with our feet ball. Just as you increase the pressure of that air, it does actually heat up. But um, we're not relying on evaporative drying. Evaporative drying can actually have bacteria breathe because we're moving up and mining it. So really, it's just it's a mechanical process of just sort of physically scraping the air off the, the water of your hands with air. Because no, actually, I didn't notice that it didn't overdry. You yeah. know that that's heating up off the so heating up your hands air can promote bacteria growth, but also to create skin barrier culture. Um, you know, drying hands out, which is not good. I guess my question is sort of implementation. I mean, the bathroom here has a Dyson um, hand dryer. Yeah. Are you looking to basically replace all your old Dyson hand dryers out there, or is this sort of, you know, pushing forward? You know, I don't want to speak for some of it, certainly. Within um, research and development, okay. as we'll come on to later on, you know, we're really, um, you know, we think there's a lot of benefits with Nike J compared to traditional methods and to paper towels. So what would make me happy is if we can put this much more efficient, much better technology uh, into those bathrooms to replace those incumbent methods, the methods which we know are much for the environment, um, which we know are efficient. And you know, replacing the current hand dryers, I guess, would be great. We want to give people our best technology, but really we're trying to um, you know, give people a much more sustainable and much more efficient product. So it's so, sort so looking for new um, applications for it, or in terms of replacements? Well, yeah, so it's a bit of a yeah, new, new applications. Uh, essentially, we think that the, the sustainability message in this is a good one uh, to replace paper towel dispensers. Yep. So that's really our, our target right. market. And this, by the way, is Sonu, who heads up our professional division here in Australia for all as well. So Sonu will be around, we'll see at the end of the session for any other questions. But, yeah. you, can, you can also think of it as just because Dyson launches a new vacuum cleaner doesn't mean everyone rushes out to replace the Dyson vacuum cleaner they've already got. No, but if you, but Well, but that, <laughs> Dyson doesn't make phones yet. <laughs> and yeah. plenty of people still hang on to their old iPhones. <laughs> so, yeah, some good discussions there, guys. And, okay, so let's move on to our next section. So around the corner again. So... Um, so, everyone here, quick show of hands. Who thinks paper towels are recyclable? Put your hands up if you think they're recyclable. One, two, three. Okay, I'm afraid you're all wrong. They can um, make recyclable material. 
Sometimes I mention recyclable material, however, um, as we'll talk about, they're not actually recyclable. You're not alone. Um, 17 percent of Australians think you can recycle paper towels, however, councils across Australia do not recycle these. Um, so, as we've we seen earlier on, yeah, the process of, of making paper towels is very labour intensive and uses a lot of natural resources, and then they end up predominantly in landfill being incinerated, so incredibly bad for the environment. And that's that, by the way, the 17% um, um, and a couple of other stats we'll bring up. Um, that is from a YouGov um, study of over a thousand Australians and a national representative, you know, all kind of perception based. Um, so, from that same study, actually, we asked people um, if they thought that classic hand dryers produce less CO2 per dryer than paper towels. 55% um, of people actually thought that um, classic hand dryers were less efficient, but they produce more CO2 per dryer than paper towels, which is Totally wrong. And we have a practical experiment here which looks at both front cost and CO2 emissions comparing my QJ and paper towels. We need two um, volunteers from the audience, please. Two people. Who wants to have a go? Fantastic. We've got someone here. One more. Sorry, come on. Yeah, you can use it again. So you've got, what do you think? Would you like to use my QJ or would you like to use my paper towels? Use my QJ. Sorry, you can use paper towels. Um, so if you just use the products to dry your hands once, and you can use the products to dry your hands. And you can use the So what this calculator shows you um, is one use here represents a week's worth of drying. So that's 200 dries per day, or work for seven days, comparing um, 9kJ to paper towels. And as you can see, so for the same amount of dries, we spent 36 cents in energy to run 9kj because it's using really such a minute amount of energy each time to dry your hands. You can spend $56 on paper towels. And that's just replacing the paper towels themselves because you don't have to pay for those. But also you have to bring people into the washrooms to replace them, to clean everything, to dispose of the paper towels afterwards. Um, and they're for really big businesses, you know, even the plastic bags which go into the, the waste paper bins, you know, how much costs associated to them. So there's a huge, huge difference in running cost. Often we see people um, who are reluctant to spend money up front um, in order to install something like that KJ, you know, because putting a big power spencer on always is perceived to be a bit cheaper. How we quite quickly see that the product pays for itself many times over during its life. So what percentage uh, of improvement would this new uh, hand drive be compared to, say, your very first Dyson Airblade? So in terms of voltage, uh, my KJ and its eco motor sport is the bizarre is running about 650 watts. Um, our previous um, lowest power machine was 1,000 watts. So you know, it's, it's nearly half. Um, and it would be even lower than your very first airblade. Exactly. Yeah. So our first airblade is running about 600 watts. So we're, we're, at, we're at a fraction of that now. And that's just due to the, the research and development we've done over the other decades since we've launched the technology. So there, there are reasons for those old iPhone owners to get new iPhones, and there's reasons reason for previous Dyson hair dry, mm -hmm. dry owners to upgrade too. We think there's more of a benefit associated with certainly, <laughs> um, particularly thinking about both running costs and the impact on the environment. In terms of uh, application for the design, I, I've seen um, the, the two-in-one sort of Dyson tap and hair, yeah. hair dry. Is there a... a, a yeah. yeah. We are constantly looking at you know, how we can improve our products to make them work better and more efficiently and give benefits to the consumer. I won't go into any detail, in fact, about what we think about. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's something we're constantly looking at, you know, how we can make that much better. And I think just before we move into put some hygiene and stuff we're going to talk to, I think to put it into perspective as well, um, you know, the, the, the Airblade 9 kg actually uses 85% less CO2 than paper towels. And is 99% um, uh, cheaper um, than uh, the paper towels as, as well. So I think those two um, pieces as well, I think, really important to put that into perspective. Yeah. Um, so from the study which we did, 89% um, of Australians have said they've seen someone use the bathroom, but they're not washed or dry their hands afterwards, which is a huge amount. But very interestingly, only 25% of people actually ever admitted to doing that. So there's some interesting stuff going on there. Um, the perception often is that paper towels are actually more hygienic um, than hand dryers, which this really isn't the case. Um, the paper towel dispensers themselves can be really around with bacteria and viruses and they're not cleaned effectively. Um, and also, if the paper towels aren't transported or stored correctly, they can actually be contaminated before you can use them. So if they've been stored in a dusty or, or, a, or a dirty room, or they've picked up contaminants,
contamination of the shit around the world. Um, you could be driving around something that's really contaminated. Obviously, with non KJ, because we have our HEPA filter in the product, you're, you're guaranteeing that every single time we're drying our hands with purified air, it's much, much more hygienic. Well, one thing I'd notice as well, whenever I go to a washroom that has one of the, the fake Dysons that are just not as good, they yeah. have a container that captures the water and they just have this horribly yeah. stale water smell You're just blowing in your face. Yeah, yeah, and that absolutely. annoys me and I always rue that they were too cheap to buy a real Dyson. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so we, we always often in, you know, challenges why we don't capture water and things like that. Um, that's because it's, you know, it's really a biohazard. It's very, very thick water, which is you know, scraping from people's hands. Um, so the best thing to combat that is just to have a good, clean regime in your bathroom to make sure that people are coming through and clean. Okay. And, and if we can just perhaps take this opportunity to, to recap on, you know, on some of the problems that we're really solving with this technology. So, um, which are also kind of showcased in the, in the video as well. So, do you want to just take it through just a quick recap? Sure. Well, we've got a bit of a video here, which you know, please come back and watch um, later on. But um, you know, just to recap, you know, we know that non KJ compared to paper towels is, is much um, cheaper to run, considerably cheaper to run up to 95%. It produces less CO2 than they dry, and that's because you know, there's smart front um, energy involved in making non KJ, but as soon as it's installed, it's using tiny amounts of energy to dry your hands each time. Um, you also re remove the mess and the issues with hygiene which are often associated with the towels and having to clean those. Um, and if nothing else, you know, we're, we're not happy to cut down trees and clear forests to, to process those using energy, water, and chemicals just to find them on the lots. Any final questions? Yes. Um, let's see, two emissions figure. Um, a question there. So, in a state like New South Wales where everything runs on coal, Mm -hmm. uh, including electricity. Um, does that does that figure change depending on where, um, where you where you are? It absolutely does. This is there's a huge energy cost within this, but again we're comparing you know, something that doesn't actually use electricity to something that does. We get all of our uh, both runoff costs and CO2 emission comparisons from a third party, the Carbon Trust. I don't know if you've heard of Carbon Trust, but they're an international organisation who are here in partial with third party who can test products and also look at the life cycles of those. To compare them directly. So we can get carbon trust to look at the life cycle of all of our products as well as paper towns and our other capacities to get these numbers partially. Okay, so we've got two more um, sections we're going to take you through. So if you just come in this way. So we've got a little experiment here um, which shows you again about the that contoured, that packaged contour plate technology, which is how effective it is at drying um, the chemical to reach places in your hands. So we have a test rig here, and this hand is also used, um, particularly representative, but it has a hydrochromatic paint on it. And that paint turns a different colour when it's wet. So what you'll see is we'll do a duck into this tank of water and then use my KJ, and you'll see how effective it is at cleaning you know, all, you know, both the, the front of the hand and reaching out the sides as well. Secret places, um, but this is really kind of bringing the lab over to over to you guys here in Australia, so you can see the levels we go, which is way beyond industry standards in terms of testing. Um, any questions on this one? So, I mean, obviously you turn the turn it around and it'll clean the other side too. I mean, normally you've got to turn your hands around. So this is just to show that technology how it wraps around your hand. Obviously, as a, as a user, you put your hands in both ways to yeah. clean both sides. Yeah. Okay. So, over to the prototypes. So we have this kind of final section, uh, and this is really hoping to try and bring to life just how much um, time we spend looking at tiny details which can have a significant impact on product performance. 
So as part of the development for 9KJ, we spent more than three years developing the product and made more than 700 prototypes, each one improving incrementally on the last one to, to get it from an idea to the product that we have today. Um, and as you can see, as we developed, particularly this curve play technology, how we developed and refined it as we went along, um, and minute changes in geometry can have a very, very big impact. So you might be able to see there's a slight difference between these two prototypes here, this one which has quite a flat blade, and this one which is starting to push the angle of that backwards. So what we found is when we changed that angle, is people um, naturally, through our user training, they start to move their hands closer to the blades, which makes they try quicker. So we then knew that was the right direction to head in. Um, and then later on in the development, you know, we're looking at really, really tiny changes in geometry. So you can see, you know, just in this curvature here on each end of the blade, there's a very, very minute change in geometry there. You know, we're talking about millimeters difference. Um, but changing from, from this uh, blade design to this blade design actually saved us two decibels on product sound power, which is significant. So yeah, we're looking at tiny, tiny little tweaks which can have a huge, huge impact on both product performance, efficiency, uh, and everything else. Fantastic. So um, that brings us to the end of our uh, technology demonstration area. Um, we would really encourage you to head back through um, to re-experience um, some of these um, areas um, for yourselves. And we'll, we'll be around, um, as well as Sonna um, and Jez from the brand team, um, for any other questions that you have. Um, uh, so I guess kind of the, the main, uh, main thank you I wanted to give at this point was to, to Will for taking us through everything and to you guys for, for joining us. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.